my name is Jenny and welcome to my channel. As you saw by the title, we are here today to talk about mental health. And yes, my hair color is different. Um, and it's because it's starting to fade from washing. So you, you see different colors with me from purplish, bluish to this pinkish. So, but we're here today not to talk about this. I know people ask about questions about my hair. So that's what I'm talking about that. We're here to talk about my mental health because um, I've touched on it. Like in different videos, I've talked about my social anxiety disorder. I've talked about my bipolar disorder, but it's time for me to sit down and really talk about it. And the reason I'm talking about it today, well, it's for two reasons. Number one, I was sitting and filling my pill bottles up and I'm like, you know what? I need, I need to talk about it. I just need to tell you guys about it. And I also need to say, I'm sorry. And the reason I'm saying I'm sorry, um, is because I haven't answered you guys comments that I promised that I would do. And I haven't been doing May was really rough for me and I know I've talked about that before and you guys know that I'm not making any excuses I'm just telling you guys that you guys that's been with me for a while know that you guys that are new here I'm just going to kind of do a little backstory so you guys that have been here if you want to fast forward that's that's perfectly okay with me um my nephew passed away on May 4th and we were extremely close and it set me for a tailspin so I'm just now coming out of it so I'm getting better um my sister is still having trouble so I'm kind of looking out for her um but little things like that will send me into weird cycles with my bipolar disorder i have what's called bipolar disorder rapid cycling with mixed episodes which means today i could be completely depressed and tomorrow i could be completely with my mania so just and actually it could even happen in the same day i could wake up on top of the world thinking I'm going to do this amazing makeup look and I'm going to get up and I'm going to get in a bath and then 10 minutes later I could be like yeah I don't I don't want to do anything and I could literally get up go in the bathroom to wash my face and then I sit down like on the commode with the lid down and not do anything for hours or I could get up with plans to do something and then I go lay in the bathtub for hours and that's what I do and that's the way I've been all week this is Friday and that's the way I've been almost every day this week. One day I went to sit in the bathtub and I sat for three hours. And if you watch my Butter Depot, then you know what I'm talking about because I was sitting there for three hours. And then that evening I had this burst of energy and I did the video. So that's just what happens to me. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Um, I woke up today and I'm like, I'm going to do my June Pride Month look. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to do it. I put this shirt on first. And then, well, first I plan to put my, my, um, a proud mom of a gay son shirt on. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do it. And then like two hours later, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I put that outfit back on and then 15, no, like half an hour ago, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Putting this clothes back on. And that's just what happens with my disorder. And it just goes boom, 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 all over the place. And it's just really, really hard sometimes to deal with me. And that's why I've had relationships just go between friendships and husbands. I'm in my third marriage. And how Mike puts up with me, I have no idea. Because he doesn't understand mental illness at all. So I don't know how he puts up with me sometimes. I really don't. But I just kind of wanted to get on here and talk about the medications. Talk about how I was diagnosed. And explain to you why I haven't answered comments. And then we'll, we'll kind of just kind of go as, as time kind of go through this video and I want I don't want to make it too long because I know a lot of people don't like to sit through um, long videos so I'm gonna to try to make it as short as I can um, first let's talk about the comments okay so I did my May video um, and I'm gonna tag it up here for guys that didn't get a chance to see it yet and it talks about the death of my nephew and I started seeing the comments come in and I just couldn't I couldn't go back to that video I couldn't go back and see them because it just brought it back and I start crying and I couldn't do it. Um, and I saw them come in my, like my emails and I, I tried to go back and I thank you guys so much. Like I saw those comments come in and sometimes I'll miss comments. Like I either won't get the emails or they won't show up in my app. I just, I miss them completely. And that happens to me all the day on time with YouTube. Um, but I saw them coming in and I was like, oh my God, they, they've been there with me for so much. And you guys just mean so much to me. And it's just meant a lot and I thank you so so much but every time I'd go in to answer a comment it would like 
it would bring it back and I just couldn't I couldn't do it and I wanted to thank you guys so much for that and maybe I'll go back you know at some point and just individually answer the comments and then I got really far behind like because I left YouTube for a few weeks like three weeks I think it was and I'm like oh my god you know I have all these comments I need to go back and answer and right now I'm just really far behind on that so I'm trying to like answer the last couple of videos you know the, the, the comments but I got extremely far behind on that and then I'm taking like a little bit of a, a weekend break from Instagram because I kind of got a little I need a mental health break um, I've been working so so hard over there and if you guys follow me over there you've probably seen where I've been getting some PR which I think my PR people over there but I just kind of got to where you know, I had to keep my posts going and I'm like posting a lot just trying to get um, trying to get a following established over there um, and I'm not a numbers person or I try not to be but it got to be that you know it got to be where I was like paying so much attention to those numbers and I've lost like I've really got close to the 10k and then I lost like hundreds of following like hundreds we're talking hundreds in one week and then like in a month's time I lost like 15 1600 and I'm like why do I pay attention to that like why does it matter because those people aren't real followers if they follow just to turn around and unfollow you within a week's time they're not real followers so I'm like you know what I just need to take a step back and just focus on myself and not pay attention to that and that's exactly what I've done I've unplugged on weekends we go camping and it feels really good and I've unplugged for this weekend not even gonna, I'm not even gonna do it I'm not gonna pay attention to it um, I put a little post up on my stories like this is what happens and then I told all the little chats chat people that groups that I'm in I'm taking a mental health break and it feels really good but part of me is like I really need to answer my comments I really need to answer my people but then part of me is like Jenny you just need to step back you just need to not let things bother you you need to step back and I need to get on here and talk to you guys and I'm hoping I can go back and, and catch up with my comments and I feel so guilty for not doing that because that's not me and I've talked about that on here before how I want to keep up with my comments and I feel very guilty for that but like my mental health has been not in a good space probably since I don't know September or October it's just been bad and I, I get on here and I put on a smiley face and I get on Instagram and I put on a smiley face because that's what I've always done with my bipolar disorder and a lot of you guys out there understand what I'm talking about that's part of what a lot of people with bipolar disorder do we put on a smiley face because we don't want to have people you know we don't we have a shell and we have the space and we don't want people to to come into it so we put a blockade up so that nobody can get through that so we're like if we put this shell up around us nobody can break it it's like kind of like um you know it's like an ostrich egg where it's like tap 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 don't don't tap any harder don't tap any harder don't get close enough to that egg because we don't want anybody to break through it and then sometimes we let people tap a little bit and they'll break through it and we let them in and then they might break too hard and then we got to push them out you know so that's that's what we do um so saying that i've let a lot of people in that have hurt me um over the past and before i was diagnosed i got diagnosed when i was 30 years old so i've only been diagnosed or 33 i've only been diagnosed for 20 years so i went years begging and begging for help begging I was very suicidal for many years um, even after I was diagnosed because they put me on so many different medications that did not work um, before I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder I was diagnosed with general anxiety disorder I was diagnosed with depression and it was like every six months at first it was like oh let's treat the depression or oh, let's treat the anxiety so I've been on probably 20 different medications for each thing trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with me and then finally I'm like guys please send me to a psychiatrist because I know what's wrong my dad through alcoholism and through his AA program would actually help these kind of people so I knew I knew from a child what was wrong with me but no one in my family besides my dad who was divorced from my mom he's the only one that understood but nobody else did um, my first two relationships my first two husbands didn't understand when I met Mike the day I met Mike he said tell me about you you know I just want to know more about you and I said I'm effed up in the head I need help like literally I'm like if you can't deal with that then we don't need to be together and he did he's like okay I can I can I can deal with that I'll get you help and um, I got pregnant with Jacob a month after we got married because I'm, I'm like I want more kids that's what I, you know that's what I want to do and he accepted that and he's like okay go for the pill the day we get married and that's what I did and um, obviously I didn't want to do anything medication wise while I was pregnant so we didn't didn't do that until um, I think Jake was five months old when I finally am like okay 
um, my breastfeeding got a little lower and that's another discussion of why that happened. I'm not happy with that, but anyway, that's another, that's another thing. Um, so, um, I realize I'm like overriding your face. So I, um, and you know, my, all these breakouts is because I've been very nervous about getting on here and talking to you guys about this. But, um, I finally saw a therapist and that's when they were like, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll treat this, we'll treat that, we'll treat this. And like I said, this went on for, I was 28 when I had Jake. So this went on for, for years before they finally sent me to a psychiatrist. I was in his office for like five minutes. He goes, oh yeah, you're manic depressive. I'm like, oh, finally, finally someone hears me, finally. And they tried me on different medications. When medication put me, it, I gained 30 pounds within a couple months and back then, I didn't realize about the anorexia. So back then it's like, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. And then they saw it was affecting my liver at the same time. They were like, yeah, we can't put you on this. So they would just kept trying me and trying me. And then finally they had put me on a medication that actually helped. And that was Lamictrogene, which is Lamictal. Been on that ever since. So I've been on this for like 18, 19 years. That helped with the manic depressive part or the manic mania that helped with that. So it's an antipsychotic. This also works for my temporal lobe epilepsy. So they've increased the dosage. So it kind of is working with that. Um, but I'm still having my seizures. They didn't, they kind of started when Josh died. Um, because any kind any amount of stress triggers my, my, my seizures. So um, I go back to my neurologist in July. So I have a feeling they're going to increase them again. But um, I'm on the mix call. So I'm going to start pulling my medicine out. And we're going to be talking about what I'm on. Um, and why. So I am on, let me get my other dose of Lemictal out. It's over. Oh my God, where is it? There it is. So my Lemictal, I am on two different dosages. I'm on 150 and I'm on 100. And the reason is, is because I, I can actually break up the 150, but I, they had started me on one and then put me on another one. So I'm just trying to finish out one. I take, um, I take 75 milligrams and then 100. So I take 175 milligrams and I just divide it up. So I take 100 at night um, or 150. Oh my God, I'm so confused right now. I know when I'm putting it in my pill bottle, my pill box, if I have my pill box in front of me, I take 100. I take 150. So instead of using the whole 150, I just take the 150. Uh, oh my God, isn't that awful? I need my pill bottle. So if I'm having my pill box in front of me, yeah, I'm 150. Oh my God, isn't that awful? I couldn't remember. So I take 100 at night and then, or 150 at night, and then I take the rest of the morning. I couldn't believe it. I can't remember that. So I take 150 a day. I take 150 at night and then, oh my God, <laughs> let me get my pill bottle. Because if I have it sitting in front of me, it's like my brain, I, let me get my pill bottle. I'll be right back. Okay, I was wrong. I take 175. See, I just have it sitting in front of me and I remember what I do. So I take 100 at night. And then I divide those hundreds up. I'll get it right here. Okay. So I take 100 at night, and then I take the, I take half of 150. So I take 75. Right now. I take 175. Isn't that awful? But I have, you know, I have these, so I know what time of the day I'm taking my medication. I can't believe I remember that. So I take 100. It was 150, and they changed it. So, whew. but anyway, they said they can go up to 300. So that's what I take that part for. And then I also have OCD. I have seasonal affective disorder and this year has been the worst and we'll talk about that in a second and I also have um I have social anxiety disorder I have body dysmorphia which led to my restrictive eating anorexia I think I think that's it I don't know it's hard to tell with me but anyway um I'm not making a joke of this this, this is how I, I I I work with it okay and I also have um neuropathy that was from my chemotherapy but mine is not the part where like I tingle except if I have my hands under hot water then they tingle really bad so I can't go like really hot water um mine is like an all over itch like really bad itch to where it's on the inside of my body and I can't get it out. So I take 300 milligrams of gabapentin in the evenings. Um, I hope I'm not showing you all the information, but I take that in the evenings um, for that. And I used to be on 900 milligrams and now I'm first 12, then nine, then six, now three. So that's better. I also have a thyroid disorder and it's actually an autoimmune disorder. It's called Hashimoto's with hypothyroidism. So for that, I take 
it's really weird, but I have to take like different dosages through the week. But for that, I actually take my l -throxine. So I take that every morning. And then for, I actually have, it's, it partially treats my migraines and it partially treats my depression. And I take Topamax for that. So I take different dosages of my Topamax. I take 150, so I take 150 a day. I take some in the morning and some in the evening, so I have two different, but they actually, I had my appointment this week and they told me they're actually going to just do one dosage and then I'm gonna to have to split my pills in half because I'm paying double, you know, I'm paying for both. So he's gonna actually do 100 and he's doing extra pills if CVS gets it right because sometimes they don't. They've never got it right with my l so they're actually, I had to go through my mail order because CVS never got it right. So hopefully CVS will get it right. He said he's going to write like a long note on there to hopefully get it right. So hopefully they'll get it right this time. Um, that way I can divide the pills up. Okay, so it also, with my PTSD, that started from having cancer. Because after cancer was done, I had like a rigid thing. Every Thursday I had my chemotherapy. You know, so many days, every, every third Thursday, I had my chemotherapy. Um, I had radiation every day, Monday through Friday. I had doctor's appointments this day of the week. I had labs this day of the week. You know what I'm saying? So everything for, you know, for from December 2016 all the way to March 2018, I had this particular schedule. And then if something happened, like one day I went to have my chemotherapy and my counts were really low, so I couldn't have it. And I bawled like a baby because I'm like, I'm supposed to be here this day. And they said, well, you need to come back, you know, and have your lab works done again. I'm like, but I'm supposed to have it today, today, because you get on this strict schedule and your brain is like, this is what I got to do. I got to do this this day and I got to do that that day. And so you get on a chemo schedule and your brain gets on a chemo schedule, you know, and that's what you're supposed to do. And then it throws it off and then your cycle through it. And, and it just messes with you mentally. And if you guys out there that's been through chemo, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So you're, you get chemo scheduled and your brain gets used to chemo schedule. So, you know, like I said, from 2016 to 2018, that's the way my life was. And then I went on a pill that I started in May 2018 and it went to 2019 and literally GMI, I had a diarrhea every day. So I was stuck at home, couldn't go anywhere. And when I went somewhere, I had to stop at a bathroom every 15 minutes, you know, so that became my life for that. And then when all that was done, I didn't know what to do because my life revolved around this control that life had on me that I didn't have on life and PTS started PTSD and I saw all my friends not all of them but a lot of my friends passing away and I was still here and I'm still seeing that so I'm like why like why am I still here and I still believe it's so that I can help other people I did a video on TikTok and my count my followers jumped by 5,000 and I'm like from one video I had so many people contact me because of that video because of either you know they've had loved ones that's been diagnosed they've had um themselves gone through it and i realized the day i was diagnosed but i really realized it from that video of how many people that i could help how many people that i could come in contact with and that's the reason i started this channel so i think you know to this day that's the why i got that's the reason i got cancer is so that i can help other people and the same thing with the mental illness, so I can help other people. And if doing this one video helps people, then that's why I am here. So I'm hoping that this video is reaching people to help other people. And I know I said I wouldn't let this video go on, but this is what I'm here for. You know, this is what I do. And that's why I have these, these pills out to show you. I'll make this shit up. This is my life. You know, this is what I do. This is who I am. And I want to be able to reach you guys with this. So that's why I'm kind of going through all this and explaining things. Like my OCD is not the kind of OCD where I don't like to touch people and things. Mine is I can't stand things out of order. I have to have things a certain way. I cannot stand my schedule to be messed up. I can't stand for um, things to be thrown at me. Like I need to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Like as far as like if we're going somewhere new, I need to know where it is. I need to know how we're getting there. I need to know when we're going. I can't stand things to be dropped in my lap. I don't like spontaneity. I don't like surprises. I don't like any of that. I need to have a schedule. I need to know this. I need to know that. I need to know that. Like if something's being shipped to me, I need to know where it's coming from. I need to know when I'm getting it. I want a tracking number. I'm just really particular and it's bad. It's really bad. If I see a picture crooked on the wall in an office somewhere, I'm going to get up and I'm going to move it when nobody's looking. It's 
it's bad. It's real bad. You can ask my sons about that. It's, it's really bad. But anyhow, enough of that part. So that's where we are with that. So for as far as my migraine and stuff I was talking about, the Topamax is for that as well. Now, vitamin wise helps with this also. I have I have vitamin vitamin B deficiency. Um, they found out through the anorexia and all that that I am vitamin B deficiency, extremely low white cells, which is I can't go out, which they can't they can't do anything about. They can't with my diet they've tried, with vitamins they've tried, they can't figure it out. I've taken the white the, the baby aspirin, it's not working. But anyway, the vitamin B deficiency, I take a vitamin B um, methyl B complex, but it's still nothing seems to be helping with that. I have IBS. So I get to take good old school salveners, okay? Um, allergies, take Benadryl every night before I go to sleep. It's supposed to help with sleep, but it doesn't have insomnia left over from chemo. Didn't have insomnia very bad before that chemo. Hmm. Okay. And I also have circadian rhythm, which means my cycles are off. I live on Hawaii time here in the East Coast. You know, I'll get up at four. It's, it's bad. It's real bad. So I have osteoporosis, which is kind of like you know, the Hashimoto's messed me up everywhere, and I had they just told me I had a thyroid disorder. I found out when I started going to a rheumatologist um, that, oh, yeah, by the way, you have Hashimoto's. Explains a lot in my life. Um, but I have to take a lot of calcium because I can't take osteoporosis medications because I'm allergic to it, and they think one of them may have led to my breast cancer. May. May have. But I have to take a lot of D3, so I take that too. So that takes care of that. Now, we're going to talk about my seasonal affective disorder now and then i'm gonna try to let you guys go so my seasonal affective disorder which a lot of people are going through this right now has been hella bad this year and a lot of people have had a lot of problems with it because of covid um and a lot of people are just now getting it because of the whole virus thing because we're all being locked in our house with me it's a little different um because my social anxiety disorder i'm usually kind of in my house anyway and that's one thing mike didn't understand he's like well what's the difference you don't go anywhere anyway the difference with me is I chose not to go anywhere before. Now I'm being told I can't go anywhere because of not only COVID, because of my white, low white cells. So because of my low white cells, I can't go out because of COVID. So that's kind of like hand in hand, like you're told, oh, you can't go out because you have, you have low white cells and if you get COVID, you could die. So oh, it's, yeah. it's like um, hand in yeah. hand. So anyway, um, so I, I'm trying to remember after my husband just really interrupted me. Um, he does that. Um, he, my train of thought lose, gets me lost too. Um, so anyway, so I get told you can't, you can't do this, you can't do that. And it just threw me into a really bad tailspin. And my depression just went. So they put me on a medication. They doubled it. And they doubled it again. And it did not work at all. Like at all. So I talked to my doctor this week. I'm like, you need to do something. You need to switch my medication. Because this medication is not working. Like, it's not. And the last time they, they doubled it, we tried it. Did not work. So they put me on a medication called Celexa. Celexa was the first medication I was ever on, ever, back when Jake was a baby. So 22 years ago was the first medicine they ever put me on. When they put me on that was after I had him, before I knew about this whole restricted eating anorexia. So obviously, after I had him, I did lose 20 pounds when I when I had him, but I was still like, I need to lose weight, I can't be like this, I need to lose weight. So I was still on that, the beginning of the anorexia I didn't know about, right? I didn't know there was such a thing as restricted eating anorexia. So I lost a lot of weight right after I started that medication and they were like, you can't be on this. We're going to have to put you in a hospital. You're losing way too much weight. So they took me off of it. Obviously now is a little different. Even though I have the anorexia, my weight's stable. Now I've stabilized my weight out and the doctor like was okay with that. So now that they're okay with the fact that my weight has been stable for a year, a little over a year, a year and a half, they're going to try this again. So I just started it this week. So we're going to see where it goes. Um, and we're, we're just going to see. So that's why I wanted to get on here and talk about this because this is a new medication. We're going to see where it goes and we're going to see how my moods go and we're going to see where it takes me in the videos. Um, we're going to see what it does on Instagram, like how, it, how I get back in the groove of things because I haven't been doing much makeup. I've been doing a lot of skincare, um, a lot of skincare PR. Um, 
I haven't done much with makeup, but I'm on makeup PR too, and I really gotta get on there because I don't wanna lose my contact with my people. They've been so wonderful to me, and I don't wanna lose that because they put their trust in me. Um, but I just wanted to get on here and show you guys I don't make it up. I really am a um, mental health advocate. I really do have mental health issues that I talk about. I just don't do it to try to get views. I don't do it to blow crap out of my, my butt. You know what I mean? I really do have these issues. And if you guys out there want to talk about any of this, if you guys have any questions about any of this, I probably did leave some things out because I'm, I've been interrupted. <laughs> And I remember, like, oh my god, how much medicine do I take? That kind of thing. I mean, like I said, I have to keep it all separated in here because I do forget things. Um, and with, you know, my chemo brain is still there after all these years. And I do forget stuff all the time. All the time. Um, especially now with, like, um, like the age thing. I have a tiny bit of early onset dementia. And then I have the seizures. So it's like things will get lost up there. Like, it, yeah, Mike always says, they don't have anything in there. Um, but please reach out to me if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook. I don't have, like I have Messenger, but I don't have it to where I have it notifying me all the time because I'm in another group and we're all around the world. So I used to like go off all through the night, so I took it off, but I do check it from time to time. But if you want to reach out to me, please do, please, please do. Um, I try to check my TikTok every so often, so, you know, I might try to put a little blip of a video over there too. But if you guys, you know, need to talk, just please, I'm here. I'm here for you guys, and I thank you for being there for me. I'll try to do better with keeping up with my comments. But I love you guys so much. You guys have helped me so much. Like, this channel has helped me. Like, you just don't understand. My doctor recommended me to continue with this channel. And I talk to my other doctor because I see, like, I see one doctor, like, the main doctor, like, every six months. And then I see my doctor, you know, every so often. And I actually was surprised seeing this doctor because I didn't know that I was going to be talking to him. Like, it was, like, thrown in my lap. Like, oh, by the way, I'm talking to you. It was, like, a confusion, and it messed with me a little bit because I wasn't supposed to, so it messed me up. But anyway, him, he suggested that I keep it up, and so did she. Like, they both told me, you need to keep your channel going. You need to keep up because it's helping you and helping others. So, guys, thank you. From the bottom of my heart and my brain, we all thank you. You know, every one of us in here, we thank you so much. And I love you. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Wherever you are in the world, I thank you. You guys take care of yourself. Please do. And take care of each other. Be there for each other, guys. We, we need people. You know, don't don't hide. If you have issues, please seek out help. Um, you, need, you need to seek out help. Don't, don't hide. Don't be ashamed. Mental health illness is not something to be ashamed of. Don't ever feel you need to hide. Don't ever feel you need to be ashamed of this. We need to get this out in the open. We need to be aware. We need to spread awareness because it is not something to be ashamed of by any means. That's something, you know, I've never been ashamed of it. I've always asked for help. And sometimes I just didn't get it. Always take your medications. That's like the number one thing that I stress. Always take your medications. I've always taken mine because I knew that if I don't, I'm screwed. Because off medication, I was horrible. I was a horrible human being. Um, so please take your medications. Please ask for help. And please be there for each other. Stay safe, guys. And come back and see me again.